Hi everyone, and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Today we're going to be presenting an introduction to AutoCAD architecture. My name is Ashley, and joining me are my colleagues Dave and Victoria, and Nauman, our AutoCAD expert elite. We'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their day to be here. We're very happy to have you, and hope that you enjoy the webinar. Uh, so before we begin, we'd just like to take a couple of uh, quick polls and. Dave's going to get the polls going here. So the first one is, um, is this your first webinar? If you can just take a minute and select one. All right, so it looks like for a lot of you, this is not your first webinar, so welcome back. And for those of you who this is your first webinar, a very special welcome to you. Uh, so we have another poll, and that is, which product are you using? All right, so we have a nice mixture here. It looks like most of you are using AutoCAD and uh, AutoCAD LT and some with AutoCAD architecture and uh, Civil 3D. And the last question that we have here is what industry are you in? Well, that's interesting. So we have another nice mix here. So a lot of people in architecture, MEP, civil mapping, GIS, and uh, manufacturing, and some with other. Um, so we'll get into a little bit about uh, ourselves. And uh, Dave, you can go ahead to the next slide there. Okay. So you're not, you're not seeing the slide about about us. Uh, now I can see it. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So I'll go ahead and start with myself. Um, I'm a technical support specialist based out of Boston, and I'll be playing the role of the homeowner today. Dave, our presenter, is also a technical support specialist based out of our Manchester office, and he'll be playing the role of the architect. And Victoria, who will be helping to answer your questions, is our AutoCAD architecture specialist, and she's also in the Manchester office. And then we have Nauman, who's our AutoCAD expert elite, and he's based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. All right. So some of our upcoming webinar topics include Back to Basics, Introduction to Navigation Tools, and that's on March 3rd. And then we have the third dimension, Turning on the Lights, in AutoCAD 2016. That's going to be on March 10th. Then we have Back to Basics, Customizing the User Interface with the CUIX in AutoCAD 2016, and that's on March 17th. And then on March 24th, we have Tips and Tricks, um, AutoCAD 2017 features. You can watch past webinars anytime by visiting our Autodesk YouTube channel. You can also download the data sets from Box if you'd like to follow along. And you can register for Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series by visiting our landing page. And uh, please visit and also encourage your peers to visit our AutoCAD community forums and uh, share your knowledge. If you're interested to share your feedback with the development team, we also encourage you to join the AutoCAD Customer Council where you can give feedback and uh, help influence the creation of great future releases. Um, if you would like to get involved, please email us at autocad.beta at autodesk.com or autocad.lt.council at autodesk.com. And please feel free to leave questions in the chat window. We have Victoria and Nauman helping us out. Uh, we'll answer them as best we can. For answers that we don't get to in the chat window, we'll address after the webinar. 
And uh, this session will be recorded, and the links are available in the registration reminder you received, as well as the chat window and the post-webinar survey. And please remember to visit the Autodesk Knowledge Network, knowledge.autodesk.com, where you can check out many helpful articles and service packs and hot fixes for AutoCAD architecture. For the AutoCAD Architecture Service Pack 2016, you should download and install both of the service packs for AutoCAD and AutoCAD Architecture, and download the service pack for AutoCAD first. And for those of you who don't know, Autodesk provides several versions of AutoCAD tailored um, to various industries. So for civil and mapping, we have AutoCAD Civil 3D and AutoCAD Map. For the process, process plant and industry, we have AutoCAD Plant 3D and PNID. We also have manufacturing for those doing 2D manufacturing design, electrical for people doing circuit board design, MEP for people doing mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and architecture for those in the architecture industry, which is what we're going to cover today in our webinar. And uh, so now we're going to get to our agenda, the exciting stuff. Um, we're going to Dave's going to give an introduction to AutoCAD architecture. What is it? Um, he's going to go over the user interface as well as modeling and drafting, how AutoCAD architecture uses real objects to represent components in the model, how the model can be used to create construction details, and generating sections and elevations from the model. So at this point, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dave, who's um, going to do a really great job at giving you an introduction to AutoCAD architecture. Uh, thanks, Ashley. And uh, so the, of course, we need to have a couple of um, just prerequisites here. Um, during this presentation, I, I'm, what I'm going to try to do is to, to show some of the capabilities capabilities of the software. So I would like you to look at uh, what the software can do and not critique my design because uh, I am not an architect and my design skills stink. Um, but I do know how to use the software. I've actually been using uh, the architectural version of AutoCAD since the Softdesk days. If anybody's uh, familiar with uh, Softdesk going a long time, you know, way back uh, with architectural desktop and such. Um, so I was actually there since the beginning of that uh, design and worked with the software all the way through to its current state. And I know uh, Nauman's been using the, the software for a long time as well. So uh, between us, uh, we should be able to you know, cover a lot of uh, information about the, uh, the software. Um, I am not going to be showing everything there is to uh, be had in the software. Um, this is just an introduction. I'm really happy to see that there's a lot of people online, so there must be a lot of interest for AutoCAD architecture. And I'm really curious to know what industry the 31% of the people that are in an other industry are in, but I guess uh, we'll have to just wonder about that. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about with the software is a little bit about the user interface. So it's very similar to AutoCAD. It means built on AutoCAD. So you know what you know in AutoCAD is available inside of AutoCAD architecture. There may be some commands that are not um, as visible as they are in the in the pure AutoCAD version, but you can always go back to the AutoCAD version if you wanted to by changing the AutoCAD profile to AutoCAD architecture. Um, but it's the same kind of a uh, interface. So we have you know, a ribbon where we have access to our various objects. Um, the, the most important thing with the software is that uh, instead of uh, managing drawing a building uh, using AutoCAD entities like lines, arcs, blocks, etc., and you know, managing the layers that things are being placed on. In AutoCAD architecture, we're actually using real-world objects. So when I draw a wall, I'm drawing a wall. I'm not drawing a bunch of lines that 
that may be on different layers with hatch patterns or whatever, I'm actually just drawing a wall. Uh, when I insert a door, the door knows how to behave within, within a wall. So you're going to see how that all works. Uh, and objects can be very simple. Um, you know, a door is not a very complex object, um, but they can also be very complex. So when I when I get to drawing a stair or a curtain wall, you'll see how uh, how intricate these objects can be and how they react. So we have the the ribbon is is certainly the main thing, and you'll you'll see that when I draw a wall or something, and I select on it. We also are going to get a contextual tab with commands that are specific to that type of an object. So it brings up the wall tab here uh, with information where I can edit the style or I can change um, information about you know the justification or uh, any of the, any of the different types of commands that can be manipulated within that type of an object. Um, we also uh, heavily use the tool palette. So on the, the main tab here, the design tab, uh, you'll have the various types of objects, but uh, it's just going to start the command. So if I pick on wall, it's just going to start the wall command. Um, we also can break it down into specific types of walls. So if I wanted to draw a concrete wall, I can select on concrete, and I'm drawing a concrete wall instead of just a generic wall. Um, so you have a lot of information um, that's readily available here in the tool palette that you can access directly. And you, you'll see in, in a little bit how um, much time you can save by using these objects instead of just lines, arcs, and circles. So AutoCAD architecture you know, gets into uh, everything from basic construction drawings, drawing walls, drawers, windows. Um, it does uh, space planning, so you can uh, create different types of spaces and create reports about the spaces. Um, we have symbology for um, furniture, plumbing fixtures, all that type of stuff that's built in. You can do solids uh, using something that is a lot more user friendly than a solid, uh, something we call massing elements, which are much, much more uh, memory efficient than just a traditional AutoCAD solid, and and at least as as flexible, if not more flexible, than a, than an AutoCAD object. So we have uh, all of that type of information, and if you right click on the tool palette, uh, you'll see that we can switch between the design palettes, which I have open right now to the documentation palette where we can get into information like the uh, various types of annotation, um, different types of callouts and tags and schedules that are defined within the software. Uh, also some display themes so it can create spaces based on fire rating and, and things like that and it'll create a, th a thematic map of the uh, of the object of the spaces. And we also have the detailing panel where we can get into just the basic detail components, but again, um, you could break this down into getting directly into masonry components or various components to draw your construction details, and uh, it'll um, go ahead and, and place the information here. So I can just place a bunch of CMUs real quick. Um, so that's the, uh, the tool palettes, and I'm just going to go back to the design palette for a moment. Um, some of the other things that you're going to use quite a bit here, and I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but uh, we have the style manager, which will allow me to manage the various types of styles that I have in my drawing. So if I look at a, uh, a concrete wall, I can actually see the components that, are, that the wall is made up of, uh, the material that's assigned to it. Uh, a, you know, assign um, end cap or cleanup information on how the, the wall is going to react to doors and windows. Um, same thing if I look at doors or anything. So this is going to show anything that's in my current drawing file. And you can open up a uh, style drawing just using the open command and drag and drop something in here. But uh, we also have uh, something that introduced uh, recently uh, in the last release or so, uh, which is called the Styles Browser. And this tool will allow me to um, search through whichever drawings I have um, as far as content. And uh, so uh, right now I'm looking at all my content drawings. And then I can sit there and say, you know, I want a, a CME wall. And it'll show me all the walls that are defined as a CME wall. So um, in 
these walls can be um, quite complex, right? They don't have to just be a simple wall. If I want to just uh, you know, double click on this wall to draw one of these walls and just start turning the corner here, you'll see that, uh, first of all, I'm not drawing a line and offsetting it and, and setting it to a specific layer and on a different color and adding hatching. This is actually just a single object you know, I, I can stretch or um, change however I want. And it automatically cleans up with its neighboring objects. So I have this wall cleaning up with this one, um, and we're getting nice, crisp cleanups here. Um, but we can even do things like assigning a return on my brick. So the brick is actually stopping and coming back and meeting up with the uh, insulation or the CMU on the other component. So you can, you can draw things here in AutoCAD architecture um, very simply, and if we would uh, just flip to a 3D view, and I look at this in realistic mode, right? Um, this is uh, kind of a boring side. That's my CMU side here. Um, but if I flip to the other side of the wall, you'll see that here's my my brick. So materials are being mapped to these things as well, and you'll see how that works as we as we kind of move through. And then if I wanted this wall to be on one of my tool pallets and it's not there already, you can just drag and drop the tool pallet or the object to the tool pallet and it'll add a link to that uh, style as well. So um, the styles browser is, is, a, is a great way of searching through things and you'll see that uh, within the styles browser, I'm just going to change back to... Uh, to the uh, 2D wireframe. Okay. And it looks like my cursor is not behaving. There we go. Um, so we can also search for other types of objects. Come on. And it looks like I might have locked up AutoCAD architecture, so uh, bear with me for just a moment. I'm sure that it's the go to webinar that's causing the problem, not AutoCAD architecture. All right, so I'm just going to. Let me start AutoCAD real quick. I'm sure that uh, nobody on the webinar has ever had an experience where the software has crashed or locked up on them, so uh, this must be a new experience for you. But Just uh, wait for this to lock, load back up. And looks like we're almost there. This gives me a good opportunity to remind everybody to save often and save early, just like voting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, Dave. <laughs> All right. So thankfully, I didn't really lose anything because I was uh, just working with uh, a dummy file anyway. I'll just bring that back up. Um, so just a couple other things uh, real quick uh, as far as user interface, and again, I'm not going to get into the, a lot of the details here. So we also have something called the Display Manager, and uh, I'll, I'll show a couple of examples here with what this does, but uh, basically you, you can tell AutoCAD Architecture how to display various objects depending on the view and what you want to see. So in one viewport, you could be showing a very high level of detail, so you're seeing um, 
the, you know, the hatching in the walls and such. In another viewport, you could be displaying just a, a very basic, uh, simple level of detail, low level of detail, or a presentation view of the model. And uh, there, I could spend an entire session talking about the display manager, so we're not going to get into a lot of detail here. Um, the other thing that uh, I'm not really going to touch upon, but uh, I just ex explain a little bit here, is the Project Navigator. And Project Navigator is uh, similar to the Sheet Set Manager, if you're familiar with the Sheet Set Manager in AutoCAD, with additional capabilities. So I can set up information in the Project Navigator with floor-to-floor -floor heights and uh, you know, things like that. And it'll create various drawings for me automatically just by setting up the, the sheets. So it's a very powerful tool. And people that use Project Navigator, you know, that's all they do is they use it all, every for every project. Um, it's a it's a very important part of the software. So let me let me give some examples here of what we can do with the within the software. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to drag my palette back over here where I wanted it since I'm, I put it on my other screen, uh, is well, I'll just start drawing a couple of walls. So I, I draw a wall, um, I can give it a start point, you know, 10 feet, comma 10 feet, just so that I'm um, somewhere here. And I'm going to say that I want to draw a 40 foot building by 30 feet. And then I want to go back in this direction and just make a rectangular building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ortho close option and just pick the direction, and it'll figure out how far the wall has to go to meet the uh, the other corner of the of the building. So we have a really simple, in this case, you know, um, just a, a generic wall. And like I said, you know, you can draw very complex walls. So um, it doesn't have to be just something like this. It can be, uh, you know, uh, something. Actually, let me do this. Um, I'm going to go back into my Styles browser. And you're opened up on the side. And I'm going to go back to my walls. And uh, let's search for siding. So I've got a, uh, a five and a half inch wall. Since I'm in New Hampshire, we need to have a, you know, thicker walls you might have down in Florida or something. I'm just going to select that. And I'm not going to draw that wall. I'm just going to go ahead and close this. I'll select the walls here, go to my property palette, and I'm going to select my wall with siding. And I probably put that in the wrong direction if I'm, if I'm unlucky, which I believe I am here. <laughs> so let's see. I can flip the walls around so that the siding is on the outside of the wall instead of on the inside of the wall, just using my grip. And again, if I were to look at this in realistic mode, right, now I've got siding on the side of my wall, not just a generic wall. So um, these grips that are available within the software are very, very powerful. Um, if I just select it on a wall, you'll see that there are grips to extend the wall, so I can just extend it. Um, there's a grip to move the end of the wall, so I can just move it or things like flip, which will, you know, flip the wall from inside to outside. So, um, you know, these grips are, are there to help you in your day-to-day -day drafting. Um, I want to place a door in the wall, so I'm just going to grab a, uh, actually I'm just going to select it from the, two, from the ribbon here, and let's see, what do I have? Right now I'm set to just a standard door, so I can just place this. Um, actually, when I, when I go to place a door, you're going to see um, that I can select the size of the door just by picking the, the little drop down here and I can enter in whatever size I want. Uh, and then there's a nice option in here uh, as far as, let me stretch this out just a little bit so you can see it. Um, there's a, an option here that says position along the wall and I can have it f um, unconstrained where I can just uh, pick the door and it'll just kind of follow along wherever I put it. Or um, you can tell it to place it with a little bit more of intelligence. So I said I want it to either be offset, in this case, six inches from a corner, or centered on the wall. So you see as I move my cursor now, it's, it's putting it in either six inches from the corner, and you see the temporary dimensions that show, show you what's happening here, or in the center of the, 
of the uh, wall or six inches from the other side. So I, I want this to be in the middle and I want it to be an in, you know, swinging in to the left. So I just move my cursor so that you see the swing where you want and place it. So um, very, you know, very easily I was able to place that. And if, I, if you make a mistake, you don't have to erase it. You can just use the flip options to uh, you know, position the door how you want it. So I did wind up the way I, what I had it there. Uh, so, so very simple, right? Um, I'll go ahead and place some windows. And let's see, what am I set to? I'm set to just a standard window. I'm going to say I want this to be a double hung window. I want it to be three foot by five foot. So um, you, you know, want to make whatever size you want. Right now I'm placing this based on the uh, head height of the window and I'm telling it that I want that to be at six foot eight. So I place the or select the um, wall. Again, I have this set to be offset or center, but this time I have it set to three feet away from the corner or centered. Uh, so, that, so that's what I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and um, move my cursor, and you see that it's jumping from what, what, whatever to whatever. So I'm going three feet from the from the corner. I'm going to say one, three feet from the door, three feet from this door, and three feet from the other corner. So r really quickly, I could place those those windows, you know, spaced evenly along my building. And again, this is don't don't judge my design because I'm not an architect, um, but it's, it's that easy to place. And then if if you had the, um, I just want to place another one of these same types. Um, great tool that we have is this add selected feature, and add selected will start you by placing the same um, object type. So maybe I, I have a kitchen back here, and I want that same double hung window. But in this case, I only want it to be um, maybe three feet high because it's going to be above the counter. And I just want to place it there. And let me see if I just flip to a, a viewpoint here. You'll see that now I've got my double hung windows, which are probably uh, flipped around backwards. You know, shouldn't, it should be the top panel on the outside. But again, switch swapping something like that is just you know, hit the flip grip and you can fix the the panels there. Um, but then I have my three foot window, which is, has the same head height, but it's only three feet high instead of five feet high. So very quickly, I'm, I'm starting to lay out a, a, a very simple design. And certainly uh, AutoCAD architecture does a lot more than residential design. Um, you know, it, it can be used to create the uh, um, Freedom Tower in Manhattan just as easily as it can be used to create a, you know, a, a nice small uh, log home or something. Um, but I want to show you a little bit more about how you can edit some of this information. So first of all, this, this is, that's a pretty boring door right now, right? It's just a, a solid panel door and that's the front of my house. So I might not want that to be just a, a really simple solid panel door. So I can say maybe I want that to be an exterior door with some panels in it, right? And I can change that. And now I have a nice looking door there. It's not just a, you know, a solid piece of wood or metal. Um, and you know, if you want something with uh, um, you know glass in it or something, you, you know, just go to the styles browser and you can find a different style. Um, for me, I've always liked uh, muttons in my windows, so instead of just a double hung window, I'm going to uh, select on one of these windows and I'm going to go to the edit style button up here in the in the uh, ribbon, and I'm going to go to the display properties, and I'm going to say I want to add some muttons in here. And I wanted this to be added to both the top and the bottom. And I only want this to be a half inch wide, so that's good. And I want, well, let's say, maybe two by two. I don't know. That looks good. And when I hit OK, you see that I just added um, some muttons to the, to the windows here. So, you know, you can add in a, a lot of detail if you want to see that level of detail within the drawing, right? So I'm going to go back to my plan view. And I'll show you a little bit more about some of the other types of objects. So, um, obviously, this is right now is just a single story building. But uh, just like the government, I'm going to uh, go ahead and 
add a stair to nowhere. So <laughs> I'm just going to put a stair in here. And uh, let's say it's 3 foot 8, that's fine. My floor to floor height's 10 feet, which is fine. And I'm going to say I just want to start it here, and I want to just draw it up that way to my second floor. So again, imagine how much time it is it would take you to calculate your riser and tread size. Um, draw the steer in a plan view. You can see that I have a, a cut plane here, which is controlling the display. So um, the bottom portion of my stair is showing up with the treads and such, and the top is just displaying as a box. And again, if if we want to, um, actually, let me do this. I'm going to go to viewports, and I'm going to say I want two vertical views, and on the right side. I'm going to set to a 3D view. So not only did we create the stair in, for my construction drawing, but I'm also getting a stair in 3D that will, can be shown in elevations or renderings or whatever you want. And these stairs can be, um, a, if I go back to the content uh, styles browser and I'll look at stairs. Okay. You'll see that uh, right out of the box, you know, we have, um, you know, some industrial style stairs, you know, cantilevered stairs, concrete stairs. We've got uh, steel steel stairs, ramps. So there's a lot of content here that you can choose from right out of the box. Um, the other thing that we could do is, you know, what good's a stair without a railing? So let's go back over here to railings, and I just want to set this to be just a generic standard railing, and I'll select the side there, and you can see that I just added a railing. In, in this case, it's an awfully boring railing, um, but if I went to um, my style, and I changed it to be a guide rail with wood balusters, now I've got a nice looking uh, staircase with uh, some nice balusters on the side and you know something with a little bit of detail that looks nice and again you can see the materials being applied to the objects as we go through. So that was a pretty simple stair. Uh, what happens if you had a stair that's a little bit more complex? So um, I'm going to do add selected just to draw a stair. Let me pan out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to draw it on the side. And I'll say that uh, I only want to go up uh, a few treads, and then I'm going to add a landing, and then I'm going to continue off that direction. And we just drew a nice L-shaped stair with uh, an extended landing. Or if I select on this, do add selected again, and you can see this is all the same command, right? I want to come up and just make a, uh, go further, make a U-shaped stair. So um, I, I can sit there and swap between uh, various, actually, oh, I didn't draw right. Let me draw that again. Uh, add selected. There we go. So we draw a U-shaped stair. Well, um, so you, you can add in, uh, you know, with a single command, something very simple or something very complex. And again, adding a railing or something is just a matter of picking the edge of the stair and adding, telling it to add a railing. So it's very simple to add um, even a, a high level of detail. Um, so right now, I'm, if I had this house with my stair to nowhere, I'd probably be getting a little wet right now if it started raining. It's been raining here quite a bit the last uh, day or so. So let's put a roof on this. And uh, to add a roof, I'm just going to um, pick on the corners of my building and you can see how it's adding in my roof just by picking those the corners there All right, so I've got a nice uh, roof being placed and uh, I don't really like the hips I, I, I would prefer uh, you know um, a gable over here so I'm just going to use my grip on the corner and I'm just going to stretch it out and actually, oops, let me do it this way. I'm just going to stretch this, and I now have um, you know a, a hip or a gable on both sides. Um, of course, I'm still going to get wet if I uh, if it rains because 
uh, I have this big hole here between the roof and my wall. So I'm going to go back into my wireframe, and I'm just going to pick on the wall. Again, remember the uh, contextual tabs and such? There's also, by the way, the same kind of commands in the right-click menu. And I'm going to go to this roof, roof floor line um, pull down here, and I'm going to say I want to modify the roof line. And what I want to do is I want to auto-project it to my roof. right? And you can see what happened here, I do the same thing over on, the, on this side. I'm going to go to uh, roof floor line, modify roof line, auto project, and pick on the roof. And I now have that um, whole side of the building filled in. Um, let's add another door. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah, it's selected, and we'll just put a door in over in that direction. And maybe I want to add another window over here, so add a window there and there. Uh, and you can see you can work in plan view just as easily as you can in a, a 3D view. And just making, keeping an eye on the clock here. Um, so we're able to create something pretty quickly, right? Uh, so that's you know some of the modeling things. I, I want to show at least one example of, of a more complex object here, even than the stairs and roofs and stuff. Uh, if I go to curtain wall, and I don't know if I created or if I added a curtain wall in here already. Oh, I did. All right, so I've got uh, standard. All right, so I just got standard right now. Let me add something. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll start with that one. Uh, curtain wall. And I want this to be 39 feet high, yeah, that's whatever, right? And I'm just going to pick a couple of points, and you can see that I'm actually creating an entire you know, set of, of panels for a curtain wall. Uh, but if I go to the Styles browser, and I look at curtain walls, uh, let's say... Yeah, let's do a three-story building. That's fine. And I'm just going to go ahead and select that and change my style. And now I've got a curtain wall with windows and you know materials and everything else. Um, so, again, um, I'm not going to explain how to create these styles because uh, you know that can be a, a whole webinar by itself but um, and actually a, kind of an interesting little side note is that I think all of the styles that are in here and from my curtain wall library um, I actually went through Boston taking pictures of some of the buildings in Boston and that's what they modeled the, some of these curtain walls on as far as samples so it was a it was kind of an interesting experience where I was able to um, add the some uh, information that became content within the software. So I have, let me go back here to, uh, I don't need this other viewport right now, so let me go back to single view. And let's talk a little bit about um, some construction drawings and scheduling and stuff, such like that. So I'm going to go to, um, I just go to my annotate tab because all I want is a window tag. And I'm going to select on uh, my window. I'm going to select a location for it. Uh, what's going to happen here is this tag automatically is attaching property set information based on what the tag is pointing to. So it's put, pulling information out of the uh, object. So it, it, you see the things like the styles, double hung, the width and the height, the head height. Um, you can enter information about the materials and the manufacturer, all, all kinds of information. So I just place that. It tags the window. I'm going to use the multiple option because I'm lazy and I don't want to tag each of these individually. Okay. And I'm just going to hit OK. And uh, it, looks like, uh, it looks like I missed at least one of these windows, but let me, I can undo that. Uh, window tag. There. OK. Multiple. Maybe it got confused because they had uh, some windows on one wall versus the other. Anyway, so I'm placing some tags. Um, so we can, we can put that information in here, and then I'm going to do a window schedule. And I'm just going to select everything and place a window schedule here. 
and uh, oh, so I've, I didn't get all the tags in, but that's okay. So when I want to add some more. I just do add selected. So, okay. 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 And then you can see the, the line that shows up in here. I can tell it to update the schedule, and now I've got all my windows. Uh, I actually think I forgot when that, maybe I erased that one in the back of the building. But I've got all my windows uh, here in my window schedule. So it, it's that easy to, to place. And in the schedule, instead of having it um, manually updated, you can tell it to uh, automatically um, update things. So uh, say automatic update, yes, you know, you might want, you know, if you're doing like a renovation, maybe you want to set it to no so that, you know, you, uh, if you make a change to the building, it, it's not automatically changing. And I want to automatically add new objects, yes. So now if I made a change to the, to the uh, schedule or to the building, <clears throat> this one's going to be four feet high. You can see that it's automatically changed in my schedule. So re really simple to add annotation and schedules, and this can be in separate drawings. It doesn't have to be in the current drawing. Um, I'm also going to do a couple of elevations. So let's say I want an elevation here, looking this direction. You could, if you're using Project Navigator, you can put this in a different drawing and have it linked. In this case, I'm, I'm just you know showing a real quick example. So I'm just saying that I want it to be here. Oops. Got to read my prompt sometimes. Elevation. Uh, da, 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 da. Current drawing. Specify the corner, yes. And the result over there. There we go. So I, I just uh, created an elevation. You can see I got my double hung windows and my door and the door swing and the siding and there's my roof. Um, let's go ahead and do another elevation over on this side. And by the way, if this, this was going into a separate drawing file, um, it would automatically update the tag with its uh, um, sheet and view number and such. So uh, we're able to make, you know, place that kind of information on the model real quick. Um, the, the other th piece that I want to show here, and, and again, I'll just give a quick example because we don't have a lot of time, is the uh, Detail Component Manager. And I think that uh, the software is worth using, even if you're just using it for the detail component manager. It's a really powerful piece of the software. Um, so we have a huge library here of um, detail components. So if I go into co um, into masonry and I want a concrete uh, CMU and I want a three core CMU, and you can see you know different ex things here and different sizes. I want a six by six by eight. I'm going to say I want to insert this in my model, and I can tell how I want this to be placed if I want it an elevation section or plan. In this case, I want an elevation, and I want to go from here. Um, actually, no, I think I want section. There you go. And I want to draw it up uh, 10 feet. So I just drew all the CMUs for a 10 foot wall, right? And you can see hatching and, and everything that goes along with it. And I'm just going to go back into my detail component manager. And, you know, there's brick, there's um, um, metal, so all of your um, steel framing. Right, your various uh, shapes and, and everything that you would need, all your standard sizes. Um, one of the ones that I like to draw here is uh, where are you? Uh, steel joist. I'm going to go steel joist, and I want a uh, H series steel joist, and I'm going to say insert this. And again, we can come over and say, in this case, I want this to be in elevation view. And uh, I'm just going to pick the corner of this. And I'm going to draw it out of the ways. And then I can add in my end piece here. And you can start building up your detail with all of the various components. Um, you can do keynoting of the details. Um, you know, and and have uh, uh, just a, a nice set of tools to build this. I'm not again. I'm not changing 
uh, layers or inserting blocks. It's doing all this work for me automatically. So, so what do you think, Ashley? Is that uh, do you like my design, or should I make any changes to this? Yeah, Dave. I, I personally, I really like the look of brick. Um, can you change the exterior walls to brick? Change to brick. Let me see. That's probably going to take a, a little while because I have to, uh, you know, draw some new hatching and everything. But let me let me take a look here. Um, first of all, do I have a? I don't even know if I have a brick style in my drawing. So let me just check. Uh, no, so I don't have a brick in my drawing currently. So let me go to the Styles browser and let's go find a brick wall style. So I probably want to search on brick, I would think. And uh, yeah, let's just do a standard, uh, no, I don't want a four-inch brick. Let's do a double brick wall. So I'll select uh, you know, the, double, the you know, double wall there to bring it into my drawing. And I'm going to select on the exterior walls. And go to my Styles browser and select a brick. And uh, if we were to look at this now, we've got brick walls instead, right? So yeah. what do you think? Do you like that? I, I like the brick, but I have, a, I have a couple of other changes for you as well. Okay. Um, I, I like to have a lot of light in the house, and I'd, I'd really like to, to see if you can change the windows in the front of the house to double casement windows. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, so again, let's start off by going to my styles browser because AutoCAD Architecture does have a lot of different styles in here. And uh, let's say double or casement. So I got a double casement window style. Let's try that one. And uh, let's pick on these four windows. Goes in the front of the house. Go to my properties. And let's see, I want this to be a casement double, and we don't want it to be three feet. Let's say I want to make it five feet wide. Okay, so does that look better? Much better, much better. Yeah, I'll and make this one back to five feet tall too, just so, yeah, it kind of looks goofy the other way. <laughs> okay. And the other, the other change I'd like to see, I'd like to have more use of the room on the second floor. Um, and I was thinking if you could change the roof to a five-pitch roof, I think that would work better. Okay. Actually, right now I think I have a 12-pitch, which is kind of crazy. But let's uh, change this to, you know, 512 roof. And then I'm just going to go back to my walls, uh, to roof floor line, modify the roof line. We'll do an auto project to fix my wall. Let's do the same thing over here. Auto project. Yeah. So, what do you think about that? Much better. Perfect. So, let me just show you what it looks like here with the realistic style. Right. So, we get you can see them. You can actually see right through my windows, by the way, and see the stair that's in there. The stair to nowhere. <laughs> um, and then, uh, what I'm going to do? Uh, I, might, I probably need to update my. Uh, construction drawings as well, which happen to be in the same drawing here. So you can see that my schedule is automatically updated. Right? I now have my casement double uh, showing up. And then um, my, but my elevations are wrong. So I'm just going to tell it to refresh both of these. And there's my updated elevations. So you can. I, I hope that um, you know in this this very brief presentation, I was able to show how AutoCAD architecture is a uh, um, is the right tool for doing anything within AutoCAD for doing building design. It's uh, very easy to use. Uh, a lot of automation that's happening in here. Um, you know, automatic sections and elevations and you know, the construction details and everything else that's in there. Um, I wish I could spend more time, you know, showing it because uh, it does an awful lot more than what I've shown. But I guess at this point we'll uh, jump back over and uh, we'll go through the last couple of uh, PowerPoint slides and then we'll see if we have any questions that I can help with. So let me see, get back to where we were. Whoops, too far. 
Dave, you did a really great job, and and we certainly hope that that everyone enjoyed the webinar and um, and that you hopefully learned something new. That's that's why we do the webinars. So um, in just a second, we're gonna um, we're gonna go through some additional resources first, and then we'll take a quick poll. Um, so the AutoCAD Architecture website um, is a really great resource, as well as the forums, um, and of course the service packs and uh, and hot fixes are available. And feel free to, to leave questions um, for this webinar or for future webinar ideas and suggestions in the chat window. We have myself, Dave, Victoria, and Nauman here, and we're happy to, to answer any quest any technical questions that you might have. Um, and if you'd like to leave us feedback, um, you can email us at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. And uh, so before we get into um, technical questions, if um, you can just help us out with one more poll, and that's, did you learn something new today? Mm, it looks like uh, quite a few people did learn something new, so I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, that's great. We're always we're always happy to hear that, and that's why we do these um, these webinars. So, uh, really great job, Dave. And um, so we're happy now to answer any technical questions. Um, so feel free to to send them in. And uh, are there any questions that were online that uh, you'd like me to answer verbally here? Let me check here and see if we have any questions. Again, I'm not going to be able to you know, show you how to design a curtain wall in the last few minutes that we have, but uh, I can answer some general questions if I can. Dave, there's a really good one here about um, why you might use AutoCAD architecture over Revit. Um, if you, I know you, you have experience with both of those, so maybe you could speak to that. Right. And, and, and I knew that question would be something that came up. Um, and, and it's really a matter of, uh, of user preference um, and whether or not uh, a particular product is being mandated. I know in some instances um, a project is, will come out saying that you know, the project must be done in Revit or something. Um, they both have pros and cons. Um, the uh, AutoCAD architecture ends up using a bunch of individual files to create a model as opposed to having a central file. Um, it, AutoCAD architecture is maybe a little bit more flexible in how things are, are displayed. So you have more capability as far as controlling how something looks within your drawing um, as opposed to Revit, which can be uh, fairly limited in, in how to change things. But, it, but they're both great tools for architecture. Um, and it, it, you know, it's a matter of do you want to, you know, if you're more familiar with AutoCAD, maybe you want to stick with AutoCAD architecture. If you want to you know, work with Revit, um, it's, it's a great tool as well, obviously, and a lot of people are moving to Revit, but it's really a matter of preference. Anything else? Just see if I can open up the questions panel myself real quick. I guess uh, one one thing is uh, you know if people are you know like this kind of an introduction to another product, um, we'd love to hear back from you to see if we want to do this type of thing more often or not, or uh, you know maybe you just want to be sticking with the you know, the AutoCAD AutoCAD LT type of webinars. Um, I've been wanting to do this webinar for a while because I, I am you know have a have a love of AutoCAD architecture in the first place and I think that a lot of people can benefit from using one of these what we call vertical products as opposed to just the uh, generic AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT. Um, I think that uh, if you're using AutoCAD or LT for doing building design I am hoping that you saw the benefit of, of using this more specific version of AutoCAD.
Dave, do you have any recommendations that you would make for people who don't necessarily have AutoCAD architecture, um, but they're receiving files from people who are using them, and they have those AEC objects in them, and how do you work with them mm -hmm. in uh, regular AutoCAD or LT? That, that's a great question. So it, it actually, the answer is actually kind of dependent on uh, what version of AutoCAD you have. So the uh, the newer AutoCADs, you know, like 2016, have the uh, uh, object enabler for AutoCAD architecture built right in, so you don't have to do anything. But if you are using an older version of AutoCAD, um, you may want to um, just pull up. Let's see, I'm just going to go to the AutoCAD webpage here real quick. AutoCAD. So you just uh, go to the AutoCAD website, and a quick trick uh, if you go into the Autodesk.com website, if you do uh, Autodesk.com forward slash and then product name, in this case I typed in AutoCAD, it'll bring you right to the uh, AutoCAD page, so you don't have to go and find the AutoCAD page. But then you would go to Support and Learning, and then downloads, <clears throat> and then uh, let's say I was using you know 2014, and you'll see that there's uh, object enablers here, um, the AutoCAD architecture and MEP object enabler. If you install that on this, on your version of AutoCAD, you're able to view the objects natively, and uh, even do some level of manipulation within the model. Um, can't create a new style or something, but you can move something and edit something. So that's a good question. If we have another one here, um, where can you go to get larger libraries? So there, there are some libraries on Seek. Uh, if you go to the Seek website, um, you could do some searching. I think uh, Anderson Windows, for example, has a, a library of window styles that work with AutoCAD architecture, and you can just uh, basically drag and drop them from the Seek website to your AutoCAD um, session, and it'll download that style. Um, so that that would probably be my my first place to go. Um, there may be other places as well, but uh, um, I know that there's uh, you know content available in Seek. And does AutoCAD architecture check for space conflicts for the items shown by the designer? Space conflicts. Um, not exactly sure what that is referencing, um, but uh, if you're trying to connect two things together and there's not enough room for something, if that's what the issue is, you will get this little warning um, symbol that's, that will show you that there's an issue. It's like a, a tool tip that will show up. It's uh, basically a triangle with an explanation point in, in the middle um, showing that there's an issue there. You know, if, if there's a problem with the wall cleanup or anything like that, it'll, it'll display. Right, you, you answered the question. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, for those that may or may not know, um, AutoCAD MEP includes everything that's in AutoCAD architecture as well as all the MEP tools. So um, if you're if you need to do both mechanical electrical plumbing and architecture design, you don't need both AutoCAD architecture and AutoCAD MEP. You can just get AutoCAD MEP and you have access to all the tools. And I think we have basically time for one more question, if there is one, then we're at the top of the hour. I've got a good one for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, rendering in AutoCAD architecture. Uh, somebody's asking if the uh, rendering tools are similar to those in Revit, where you could either render in the product or render to the cloud. Um, I, I can answer it if you'd like. Yeah, yeah okay. I think you, you may, you may do I, better. That's why that I um, yes, so those tools are available. Uh, they're available in AutoCAD and AutoCAD architecture. Uh, you can render either natively in the program or you can render uh, using the same cloud rendering service that is available in Revit and uh, other products. Yeah, I thought that was the answer, but I wasn't 100% sure. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I was able to 
spark your interest on uh, AutoCAD architecture if you're uh, you know in in this industry, and uh, you know please look into it if you are in this industry and uh, um, you know it's a it's a great it's it's the right version of AutoCAD for doing architectural design. I guess is my final comment there, and uh, hope everybody. Has it, we had uh, one more one more question. This webinar um, is recorded and it will be available today.